Hi, this is Stephanie Pache. I'm with RCR News Media as a CEO and executive producer. Today, we're interviewing Mart Sander from uh, the film in the Santa Fe Film Festival, The Kennedy Incident. That's right. It's a period piece. It's a wonderful feature and it's making its world premiere at the Santa Fe Film Festival. So um, thank you, Mark, for joining us from Estonia. We know it's late there um, and we appreciate your time <laughs> in uh, giving us uh, this interview. Thank so you. welcome. Good. So let's just talk about you for a little bit because you have an amazing credit list of talent from not only um, writing, directing, and producing films and television, but also you're very musical. You're uh, very talented uh, as far as music goes and having scored your film as well. Tell us about your love of music and how you got started on this path. Well, actually, that's my thing. That's what I've been doing my whole life through. I started studying uh, violin to start with, and then I wasn't very good at that. So we, they made me swap to piano, which I loved more. And uh, then I wasn't really good at that as well. <laughs> then that's when I started singing and conducting. Mm. And uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. And uh, you actually, I, I, um, I have my own, like a ballroom orchestra, it's like oh. a swing band, but with violins. So you can actually see it in the in the film where the uh, where Kennedy goes to the uh, nightclub and there's this fashion show, mm -hmm. glamorous fashion show with band playing. That's my band and me singing, and my own music of course. I recognized you in that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who are your influences as far as music goes? Oh, I, I, I can't even start. I mean, all the all the great swing bands. I mean, I like. I like uh, Woody Herman and, and Gene Krupa and Glenn Miller and well, the lot, the right. lot actually, yeah. Well, and that works perfectly for your film because it's a period piece. And so having the understanding of everything that happened during that time period is important to be authentic and let your audience really enjoy the splendor that you've created from the costumes to the sets um, and music as well as your actors. You have some um, very, very talented actors. That, and I have to say, I loved watching just all of the scenes and how you shot it and the, the angles, just amazing. Uh, along with some of the little fun things in the film where the drama scenes and there's a little bit of lightheartedness um, kind of inflected in there. So you know, the music is also a character, which I loved. I love the different uh, changes and I'm not a big music person, but I loved it as a character. It just brought you in to watch the film. So can we um, hear a little bit about the film and what was your inspiration in creating it? Um, and tell us about the two point of views because it's shot telling stories from two different women in this love triangle with Kennedy, right? Yes, well, as always, I'm inspired by history uh, because these are actual events, or I should say based on, inspired by actual events, mm -hmm. uh, which, which, which we know for certain is that uh, JFK spent two nights in, in Tallinn, in, in my city, in the capital of Estonia, uh, right before the outbreak of, of World War II in the summer of 1939. He was having this extensive European tour. He was, of course, his father was the ambassador uh, to Great Britain. So he started off there and he, uh, I think he, he traveled through something like 14 countries, wow. 14 European countries in something like two months. So he didn't really have time to spend much time anywhere. And, and he arrived back in England, I think actually on the day when the war, war broke out. Yeah. And of course he wrote his thesis, uh, a book called Why England Slept, which became a huge bestseller and that's that's why we know JFK basically. Mm -hmm. That's how he got started, and um, and uh, we we only have his signature on the arrival to Tallinn, mm -hmm. and from here he uh, he left two days later to the cross the border to Soviet Russia, uh -huh. uh, and there's another signature. What he did for the two days, we have no idea, 
And that's, of course, food for thought. A young, handsome man, uh, springtime, city full of lovely girls. I mean, it's uh, something that just begs to be told. And of mm -hmm. course, there was uh, uh, this uh, legend uh, in Tallinn uh, after the war during the Soviet occupation when uh, JFK was, uh, became president and his face was seen even in the Soviet Union, uh, people started remembering him oh. from these pre-war days. And uh, my grandmother claims to have known the woman who actually was uh, bringing up a little American. Oh. Uh, who was born exactly nine, day, nine, uh, nine months after these uh, fatal days. And it oh. happened to be on, on our day of independence. <laughs> yes. So it, it, it's like a double, double meaning. And of course, KGB was really attentive of this uh, young man. And reportedly, like every Kennedy man, he died young. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. he did. Very tragic. Yes. How can you not tell that kind of story? Mm -hmm. And of course, JFK was always adamant that uh, he always remembered these days in Tallinn. And uh, there was this huge uh, Estonian expats community in the States who escaped the Soviet occupation, and they uh, lobbied for his election. And he actually uh, has written like this, um, like beautiful thank you note to Estonians in America, saying that uh, having visited your country in, in, before the war, uh, I, I, I can uh, like feel the, your urge for, for independence and liberty, and we shall never stop uh, fighting until Estonia is free again. So his administration was always adamant that uh, America did not recognize the Soviet occupation of Estonia. Mm -hmm. So a great man and uh, a great legend for us. Yeah, I for did see. Own reasons. <laughs> right, right. I did see that there was an urban legend about their a, a love child. Um, yes. So that that is interesting. And having um, grown up with a family that had you know they looked at the kennedys as you know the camelot right and it's in and every time there was a death they were so upset but now that you're seeing all of these things about the person and he wasn't perfect and he had you know a, a lot of admirers right over the years um while he was here um this isn't too far-fetched <laughs> i think it's pretty i think it's very clever that the way that you've done this uh, especially with a woman who truly fell in love with him and then one who was using him you know for um spy craft if you will and then seeing those two women and how they looked at one man right so that whole dynamic is is uh, pretty amazing. So where did you find, now I don't, I looked at um, your uh, actor, your JFK actor, he is, he is one credit and that's your film. Wow, he won the-, the only one. Actually, I've got many, many actress, actresses who, uh, who are making their big screen debut. Right. Also, the, girl who's the spy girl, Claudette, mm -hmm. she, she does her screen debut. And uh, the other girl, Monica, she uh -huh. walked in from the street like two years ago, having done no acting whatsoever. And now she's been uh, starring my three films and my TV series. You have a good eye for talent. I, I, hope, I hope that's my, that's my true talent. Well, it's, it, it is definitely, from what I'm seeing in this production, amazing. So um, picking this uh, topic to go in and then finding the locations, Estonia is almost like it, it, it. You don't have to do that much set dressing to find good scenes uh, to shoot your or good play, locations to shoot those scenes, right? It's pretty um, easy or hard. Um, I wouldn't say that. It was quite difficult actually because oh. uh, a lot of a lot of city was destroyed during the war in mm -hmm. in the different bombings. Both the Germans and then the Russians did the bombings. Right. And uh, but uh, uh, since um, let's say like early early nineties. Uh, when we regained our independence, we've been restoring all these like old renowned Art Deco places. Mm -hmm. So all these like old restaurants and nightclubs, they are real. They're not like sets in the studio. So yes, we have, um, I, I hope we, it's a nice place to, <laughs> to, to search for history. Right. Now, I also noticed some props that looked very authentic. Um, you know, time, uh, you know, in each of the scenes, it looks like you went to some museum and pulled out these amazing pieces that look like they're 
current that that you're really in the 1940s oh okay (laughs) so uh, you shot a lot in your home too or that was separate uh joking there i always say i live in my like storage film film company storage oh there you go props everything all the like the old technology i mean i would i could reach out now and produce uh, something like um couple of um <laughs> couple of vintage phones which are here in my study for no apparent reason other than that i just have them <laughs> well i know a lot of people won't even know what they're used for today yeah uh, some of our <laughs> youth right yeah. they, they don't uh, recognize that so um what are, what is some of the things that you learned in making this feature I keep on learning how to do things like on a shoestring budget mm-hmm. because for some strange reasons. And of course, we our timing was awful because we it coincided with the COVID. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. And uh, the minute the COVID appeared, our backing was like gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, at one point, uh, I, I really thought that it's, it's never going to take place. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we did some, we pulled some strings and, and actually it's, it's, it's been filmed as a part of a TV series. The this Horse. Is a larger project, yeah, The Horse. The Horse. Um, sorry about the name. No, it, it's, it's good. Based on, actually, it's based on a very cruel uh, quotation by Joseph Stalin, who said mm-hmm. small nations are the whores of capitalism. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the fate of small nations during the Second World War. You had, uh, you were a whore to these two rapists Stalin on one side and Hitler on the other side. And you had either one or the other, or in our case, we had both mm. uh, fighting on our territory. Right. So that's the name. And of course, the action actually takes place in a, in a small brothel. So it's a double, double, double level. Yeah, right. I, I think the uh, series actually, it, it, it's now being also uh, released in the United States under the name Madam K. Oh. Yeah. They had to so clean it up a little. Milder, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have a, the punch, but nevertheless. Mm-hmm. So I actually, I, 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 I sh- like shoehorned the, the, the Kennedy story into the series ah. uh, as two episodes. Mm-hmm. At, at least I was able to do it. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it would have been like this stillborn project to uh, uh, shelf right. forever. And who knows when I can actually have it, like see it on the screen. Right. But now at least we can, even though the budget was, of course, much, 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 much smaller than we had wished for. Right. Well, but it only meant that uh, we didn't pay as well as we could have been. But it doesn't mean that the production values are are 20 times smaller. Oh, no. Because we have a 20 times less money. Right. We still did what we could, but we just weren't really paid much. Without knowing this fact of the lack of funding, you would not know it. Watching the the film, the production value is just incredible. I mean, the the costumes, everything, the you know, the set dressing, it all just I didn't look at it and try to critique it. I looked at it enjoying what I was seeing. The visual was just splendid, the colors, beautiful. Just every one of your actors, every performer, every performance, I thought was just very, very well done. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, my mother is our dressmaker. Oh. And I basically use all my friends. Uh-huh. I currently go to a film school. I'm doing my, my PhD at the local film school. Right. So I just had all my classmates and friends. And that's what actually enabled us to do it. Uh, do you know what our budget was? I do not. I do not. Do you want to guess? Uh, 10,000 US. Uh, it's a bit more. <laughs> oh, it, wow. It's something like 50,000 for, for this feature. Okay, yeah. still, that is yeah. amazing. But it's quite manageable. Right. I mean, you, you won't get rich, but you get things done. Right. And well, at it, the moment, this is it, the main ex- thing. Exactly. And, you know, I think that this type, this proves that you have the capability of working with any budget and any limitation because of what you pulled off during COVID and also for a small budget. I mean, and- I, I do hope so, yes. Yes, yeah, that is, that's an incredible feat. And, you know, there's not too many people that can can say that because I know a lot of people when they're looking at, oh, I wanna make my feature, I need $10 million. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, 
it's it, it, helps. For, it helps for sure <laughs> but a lot of times independent filmmakers don't have that luxury and they do have to be they have to think out of the box and they have to ask their friends and you know that's how it's done around the world you know if if you have the will and you have the drive and a good story I know people want to participate. Yeah, in exactly. I wanted to say you can't buy a good story. I mean, you, you can buy a good story. Well, if you don't have it, 10 right. million wouldn't make it better. Right. No, no amount of money makes a bad story good. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. No, that's that's amazing. So this is your opening night or your, first, your world premiere, rather, yes. for this film. And how amazing. And you are opening night. You know that. Yes, opening I know. Opening night for the it's festival. Great. Absolutely wonderful. We have a lot of eyes on the opening night. We're so excited about it. Um, mm -hmm. Also, all the films. I mean, but just to have a piece like yours entered was amazing um, for us to participate in helping you because we do, you know, in the Santa Fe Film Festival, folks, they care about helping independent filmmakers. And, you know, uh, this is a, a great honor to have you have selected the Santa Fe Film Festival to to kick the it off. all ours <laughs> and we were actually so excited we, we we were planning to get ourselves over there oh. because uh, it was a slight hope that things would restriction would be lifted but as we know and they not. haven't been so we, we shall be there in spirit <laughs> well if you ever are here we can't wait to meet you because we would love to um to show you around our beauty beautiful area and Yes. One day, hopefully, we can be visiting you in Estonia because that oh, yes. would be so wonderful, so wonderful. So is there anything else that you're working on now beyond the Kennedy incident that we should watch out for? Um, yes, I'm um, now concentrating on my schoolwork <laughs> because I, I'm supposed to um, uh, graduate uh, with um, three films. Oh, uh, wow. three short films which would make up one one feature mm -hmm. and uh, i've got this really uh, complicated and strange um subject my my theory which i'm which i i need to prove through my work and it's called uh, let me think <laughs> um it's only been like three years so i haven't <laughs> memorized my own subject yet but it's called uh, soundtrack of a life the diegetic score as a meta narrative. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> That's I'm a uh, studying or experimenting with uh, the balance of uh, film, the visual film narrative, and the other kind of narrative which which can be presented through film scoring, which oh. actually is non diegetic music. I mean, it's not something that's visible on the screen. But what if it were? What if this kind of music would tell its own story, ah. which probably, which might also be contradicting the, the actual narrative. And that's mm -hmm. where it gets very interesting and goes okay. into the realm of, of slight science fiction, which is my theme. Ah, okay. <laughs> wow, that sounds interesting. I like that you have not one genre. Some people like just to work in one type of genre, but you have, first of all, you, because of your broad experience and, you know, including music, you're, you know, taking advantage of, of all of those different stories in your head. Yes. Yes. My heart belongs to horror and sci-fi, nevertheless. <laughs> and if, if if it can be combined with history and music, and slight romance, that would be so great <laughs> to <Wow>. work on. <laughs> yes, well, someday. those are, those are two of my top horror and in sci-fi. As a oh, kid, I wasn't are. allowed to watch them, but I my father always let me have books and let me sneak and watch Star Trek and everything. So. My um, father understood the need for for those kind of uh, yeah. genres, um, so that's fantastic. Well, so great to talk to you today, um, Mart. I really appreciate it, and we're so excited to have you um, with your film at the Santa Fe Film Festival. Um, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to um, share with our audience? Oh, just thank you for having us there. It's. Um... It's just so sad. I was I was Googling Santa Fe. I thought <laughs> that's gonna be such a fun vacation for us all. And all the all the main actors were like, Yeah, we want to go there, let's go there. Uh, we need to do another film and be back next year. You do. And guess who is a resident in uh, Santa Fe? 
George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones. Oh, oh. we, we oh, might be able to hook you up with a meeting. I would love there. that. Yes. Yeah. You never know. You have to come here, though. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good place. It is. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. place. It's beautiful. All right. Thank you so much for your time today. You have a good night. We appreciate it. And you take care and stay well. Thank and you. keep and creating. Enjoy, enjoy the film and watch it twice. <laughs> well, uh, well, we're going to watch it more than twice. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye.